Hey everybody, it's Ken Davenport. Guess what? It's Thursday. We're here for a very special episode of the Producers Perspective live, live from Korea. Tonight, up and coming director, she's really not up and coming anymore. She has really arrived. Uh, Sammy Cannell, Vita at Sydney Center, Endlings at the New York Theater Workshop before the pandemic shut it down. And I'm going to spill the beans. She's doing Joy for Me, the new musical Joy. We're here to raise money for the Actors Fund. Please give us some likes, share this stream, and we're going to hear all about what's happening with theater in Korea right now. We're getting the band back together, getting the boys who rock to rock again. Getting the band back together, rocking the bits of the place that the members went. Some punks from the suburbs, they're the sky with too much reverb. Getting the band back together. Hello, everybody. I'm back, and so are you. And it's Thursday night, and we're doing a very special episode because, frankly, when I was speaking to Sammy a few weeks ago, I was like, what are you doing? How are you dealing with all this? Have you left your parents' house in Westchester yet? Uh, and she said, yes. In fact, I'm leaving the country. And, I, of course, it, everyone who's traveling, you start asking all these questions, like, where could you be going? Are you going to Vermont? Are you going to Idaho, somewhere to hide? No, I'm going to Korea, she says. That's right. This is what the up and coming artists do, or the actually arrived artists do. She's going to Korea. I had so many questions. For those of you who don't know, Korea and Seoul specifically has an amazing, amazing theater community. There are like hundreds, Sammy will tell us more, but there are like hundreds of theaters in Seoul. Uh, and she's going there to do like this very super secret project. We can't talk too much about it, but let's just say she has a very unique perspective or will have a unique perspective on what's happening with the theater there and just what's happening there. I want to know what happened when she got off the airplane. Um, she's quarantined right now. She's like, she can't go anywhere. She's trapped. And we're going to hear all about it. So we're going to get to that in just a few moments. Hello, everybody. How is everybody doing today on this Thursday? Hi, Madeline. Uh, good to see you as well. Thanks for, for coming back. Mary Alice, how are things in L.A.? What is happening out there? Tell everyone to wear a mask, for goodness sake. Uh, things are popping all over this country. So please, please stay safe, whatever you're doing. Stay safe. I just saw this town meeting where someone said we're supposed to be wearing masks and people in the audience actually booed. I don't, I don't understand this. Someday they're going to look back and be like, what was, what was I thinking? Why don't I just put on a mask? Anyway, uh, welcome to all of you who are watching on replay as well. We know a lot of you tune in after the fact. We've got, this is our 64th episode of the Producers Perspective Live. So I am thrilled that you're all here and definitely go check all those replays out. They're all right on that uh, video page of the, oh, shoot. Sorry, you don't, you didn't see what just happened there, but I, I just lost, lost visual. Oh gosh, come back. What's happening? Where'd everybody go? I've lost everyone. Okay, I'm back. Oh God. Anyway. I'm back. Sorry, you didn't even know, but I'm still here. Uh, anyway, so go ahead and check out all those replays. Reminder that we are here for the Actors Fund. And in case you didn't know, we are live. That's why we have technical difficulties like that. Um, but you know what is not having a technical difficulty is our donation button. Uh, or maybe it is. Maybe you should just try it. And, you know, we're really having what we really are, want to test and make sure it's working if it will accept a $100,000 donation. It's really, we're just unsure about how it's all working. So uh, go, go ahead, a couple of you, just try that out. Just give it a shot. Uh, hello from Ohio. Uh, hi, Melanie. How are you doing tonight? A couple things to mention. Um, we are here to, uh, about the Actors Fund. Sorry, it's Thursday. I'm a little off my game. I don't know what day it is or what time it is. Uh, it is Thursday. We're here for the Actors Fund. I did that already. Uh, don't forget, we are getting a lot of. Um, Feedback, great feedback on this. I just uh, put this into my uh, the chat here. This link that Mary will talk about as well. We did this three part video series about things that are on your mind right now, including, by the way, safety. The issue that we're going to talk about tonight with Sammy. Uh, we're getting some really great uh, comments on it. You'd be jumping into it late 
you get video three, so it's going to be all out of whack. But um, I want you to check that out if you haven't signed up for it as well. Uh, it's um, it's been great. We got some great people to chat and help us along. Uh, I posted a blog today uh, or yesterday about two words that I am uh, I don't think any should exist for any business anymore. I'm not going to tell you what those words are if you go check out the blog. Uh, and I've got a blog coming tomorrow with a few choice words for Governor Cuomo. That's all I'm going to say about that. All I will say this. I'm probably going to get in trouble for writing this blog. That's what I'll say. I'm probably going to get in trouble. But that's what I like to do. And you know who else likes to get in trouble? My next guest. That's why she's in Korea. Please welcome to the live stream from Korea. It's 9 o'clock in the morning there. Sammy Canold. Welcome, Sammy. Hello. Hi, hi, hi. Hi. <laughs> Um, greetings from it is, from, it is 9 a.m. Yeah, it is 9 a.m. Yeah, you can see the, the light coming in through my through my window. Um, my one my one window to the outside world, uh, here, here in quarantine. <laughs> uh, my first question is Did you have kimchi for breakfast? I did not have kimchi for breakfast. Um, uh, I uh, they, they bring three meals a day here and they're actually fabulous and um uh they range there's a lot of kimchi but oh yes that, that picture is um my dinner from a few nights ago it's bibimbap um it's quite good uh but you can see they they give you a variety of things to to choose from um so it's very nice <laughs> but uh it, it's it's interesting also so because you let's do, um, oh, go sorry Let's get this straight. We're, we have a little bit of a delay, hence because you're coming from so far away, I assume, or it just may be my internet connection, and also my monitor is freaking out. So, uh, but let, let's just start with this. The first thing that we noticed that Korea does much differently than the United States. You are on quarantine there, yes. and they have sent you to a place which was supposed to be an army barracks, is that true? <laughs> yeah. So the way that it works is um, if you are coming into the country from anywhere other than Korea, um, you uh, have to quarantine for 14 days. And if you're coming in with a visa, you can self quarantine uh, at an apartment or like at a, at a, at a hotel that's designated as, as a quarantine hotel. But because what I'm doing here came together rather last minute, um, I don't have a visa. So I fall into a category of people who have to be um, government quarantined. And uh, I know somebody who was government quarantined uh, two months ago. So I reached out to him and said, you know, what what, what was the, the process like? And he was um, government quarantined on an army base. So I was fully expecting for that to be what was going to happen to me. Um, and uh, what happens is when you get off the plane and you go through like hours and hours of procedures, which are so impressive and like designed to keep everybody safe, you get on this bus and they don't tell you where the bus is going. So I thought I was going to an army base, but I didn't know if we were going to drive for five minutes or five hours or, or what. Um, and then the bus pulled up to a Hyatt hotel and I was like, wow, I... <laughs> This is amazing. Um, so it's it's a, a Hyatt that they've converted into a government facility. So there are like um, you know video cameras all through the hallways. Um, there's oh the lobby of the hotel is like all corded off. It's like um, it's it's a bit um, you know dystopian in a way, but um, the, the the process has been so impressive, and and now. Um, I'm in this room and um, there are uh, about 10 times a day in the loudspeaker in, in the room, um, a voice comes on and says, you know, hello, this is the, the Korean government. We just want to remind you that um, if you leave your room, you may be deported. Um, and <laughs> yeah, um, and, you know, sometimes it's that announcement. Sometimes it's like, um, you know, uh, as a reminder, you only get six towels, like, you know, but it just, um, it, it's, it's fascinating. And um, I'm, I'm the adventure of being in this room alone has been like already so interesting. <laughs> uh, so we're going to get to that because I'm sure you've got like 16 different show ideas about uh, what takes place in a room like that. 
But uh, in fact, knowing you and your immersive style, you probably have a little show going on. Um, sure. So One woman. Let's go back to the airport. So you you land. First of all, how was the plane ride? Was that it's 13 hours on a plane or so I've been there a few times myself. It's a long play ride to be thinking okay. about what else is on that plane. Was it Korean airline? Was it Korean? Korean air. And I was very lucky because um, there was nobody sitting next to me, nobody sitting in front of me and nobody sitting behind me. So I felt like, you know, in a way I was six feet away from, from people. Um, so of course airflow doesn't work that way, but um, it, for peace of mind, I felt good about it. Um, and particularly because I was so like preoccupied with, are you not supposed to eat for 14 hours? Like oh. you you shouldn't take off your mask. But as soon as I was like, oh, there aren't people within six feet of me. And then I saw other people taking their masks off and like, and then they bring you food on the plane. So I was like, okay, well. Oh, well, they had food, right. Yeah, I guess we're eating now. Um, well, the other thing that someone, I sat down with someone today, very properly social distance, by the way. and. He, we were talking about travel and he's like, you know where the worst place is on these planes? And I was like, where? He was like, the bathroom. So I just don't pee for six hours. And this is the guy that flies, has to fly cross country. So he's like, yeah, I just don't drink water or coffee before. And I was like, okay, good luck. 14 hours, I don't know. I, I, my, my, my mother, who is very protective, um, <laughs> just like dumped a lifetime supply of wipes on me. Um, so I, I uh, brought them into the bathroom and spent like <laughs> a very long time wiping everything. Yeah, my, but, wife, my wife uh, did that before a pandemic, before the pandemic. She, she, like, I have to give her so much credit because she, we'd get on a plane and she would wipe everything down and me being a guy and just being like, what are you doing? Does it really, <laughs> you really have to do that? Okay. Exactly. I'll do it for you. I'll do it with you. <laughs> and now I'm like, oh my God, you you you're a soothsayer. Like you yeah. you do exactly your Teresi is an Oedipus Rex. You're like seeing anyway. Uh, so you you wipe everything down, you get there, it's not too bad. You land in Korea. Then what? So then I went through about four hours of procedures at the airport to get it was it was wild. And um I, and and I say none of it critically in the sense that like it was all necessary to make sure that I was like not going to be a danger to this country. Um, so it included, you know, the normal immigration customs situation, but then you also have to go through a procedure where you submit numbers of the people that you're working with in Korea. They get on the phone and they call those people and say, do you know, Sammy, is she like indeed coming to work with you? Um, and uh, I had to get tested. Uh, in my nose and in my mouth, um, oh. and yeah, uh, yeah, and and it was my first time getting getting a COVID test, and I am not particularly good at those things. And um, when they did the one in my nose, I stepped backwards because it's not particularly pleasant. And they were like, "Because you step backwards, we have to do it again." And I was like, "Okay, um, fair." And did they? This is a, such a small detail, but did they, how, speak English? Um, yes and no. It was interesting at the, at the airport initially, like most of the checkpoints that I went through, they didn't speak English and the Google Translate app really saved me um, wow. because I would like, type in what I wanted to say. And and I've been to Korea once before and I, and I used this then. Um, I would type in what I wanted to say and then I would show them the translation on my phone. Um, and also the app is so amazing now because you can you can take a picture of of writing in another language and then it'll tell you what the writing says. Um, so I was able to take pictures of signs as I was going to understand like which line I should be in and things like that. Wow, shout out to Google. They really need it these days, so it's good. Uh, <laughs> okay, so you go through four hours of this. Yeah testing and contact tracing and all this stuff. Any other strange surprises or anything at the airport that you were like, that, I didn't expect that. You have to download an app um, that that is about track and trace here. Um, I actually had to download two apps. And um, every morning in quarantine, I fill out the app to say, 
these are the, I, I'm not coughing. I'm, I'm not having a hard time breathing. I'm, this is my temperature. And they give you, I brought a prop. <laughs> they give you this box, which has like all sorts of PPE in it. Um, but it comes with a thermometer and they say, you know, every morning you're supposed to take your temperature. Um, and uh, then every night, the only time that I see a human in these 14 days because the food drop off is, is contactless is when um, at around 5.30 every, every evening, um, someone comes to take my temperature. Um, and that's the only human I see. And, and she's always in a hazmat suit and I like wave at her and I'm like, hi. Mind-blowing to me in so many ways. So you have to take your temperature in the morning with a thermometer that they gave you and then you, and then they come personally, a hazmat suit woman, and she takes it with the little gun. Yeah. And this and is when that happens. And this is the government quarantine. This is not the self quarantine. Yeah. Uh, and it's because, remind us again, the government quarantine is anyone that is what has to be government quarantine? You, if you don't have a visa. You have to be government quarantined. If you if you get a, if you get a work visa or a tourist visa, I, actually I don't think they're giving out tourist visas right now. If you if you get a work visa, um, you can uh, go like stay in in an apartment that's you know if if it I think it, it has to meet a certain number of qualifications. And then I have friends who are in um, a, a hotel that is like a government recommended. Uh, quarantine facility, but is it, it isn't overseen by the government in the way that that mine is. Um, and like, there, there are some interesting differences between it. Like, for example, the one that I'm in, you can't uh, get any anything pre cooked brought to you. So like, even if you had friends in the area, and they were like, I'm going to drop off something, you know, that it's not allowed. Um, but like, in the non government facilities, you can order takeout, you can like, you know, Th there's there's some interesting differences, but it's just the number of, I'm grateful for the Wi-Fi. That's just you know, oh my, oh my gosh. <laughs> good. I, yeah, but it's been perfect. It just makes you go like, why why can't we do this? Why can't we have an app that we give people at the airport? We're like literally here in New York, and like look, thumbs up to Cuomo. He made this like you got to fill out a form, and I'll make you pay two thousand dollars if you don't fill it out. But it's like with a number two pencil or something. Like you're getting an app at the airport. You have to fill it out. They're taking your temperature twice. It's not that difficult. Yeah, and and I think that like it's it's it, so much of it to me is about like in, enforcement, you know. And and like um, I was talking to somebody yesterday who who said that um, when you quarantine in Hawaii right now, they you can self quarantine, but they call you every morning. Um, to say like just checking that you're like still in your house. Um, so it's it's interesting to compare the the different measures that countries are taking. But I think you know this is this is pretty foolproof. Um, you know even if I for some bizarre reason was you know, trying to mess up the system, I don't think I I could. You know it's it's just um, and they tell you like you can't smoke in your room. The first day I got here, they were like. Just so you know, somebody smoked yesterday and they got deported. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <Won't smoke." laughs> like I don't smoke anyway, but like not like college. You can't get away with that yeah. stuff anymore. I, oh, I, was like, like, I mean, this is amazing. And you know, I uh, I spoke to Sharon Cassip at the really useful group who was on the front lines there. She's the one I did this conversation with in this um, yeah. this video series we did. And she she brought up a couple of things that I thought were fascinating and some of which you may not have been able to experience yet. But one, she said, one of the reasons they're so good because it's easy even for me to be like, why can't we do that? But this is not new for them, right? This is like, they've, they've been through this in the last 20 years, they've had other viruses, right? Yes. Um, you, and, and in 2015, there was a, there was a, 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 a large situation where they like developed a lot of these measures and, um, and I think it's also just culturally, like hygiene is more of a of a national priority. And and I think, you know, it's it's one of the things that 
you know, Sharon talks about a lot and, and I've had to sort of put the lens on for myself that like, as much as we wanna say that what's going on here is implementable for us, it, it, the the situation's not comparable. There have been 289 deaths in the entire country. So it, it's it's like, you know, we're, we're, we're in a, and, and that's because their response was early and their response was spectacular. And, and I think that like, you know, we have so much to learn from them, but it's not a one size fits all solution because we're just, such a disaster that it's not even, you know. I was, I, was, I was I was Googling cases in New York and Florida and Arizona and California before this call, and I just really got depressed. It was really not something I advised <laughs> you to do before sleep. Uh, so, have you done shows in Korea before? Have you done anything in Korea before? I've I've been here once before um, for a show, kind of. Um, I I the. Um, directed this play Endlings at New York Theater Workshop and the American Repertory Theater. And I came here with um, Diane Borger, who's the executive producer at the American Repertory Theater before we did that production um, to do research on the play because it's set in Korea. But I, I haven't I haven't made theater here. I've, I've researched theater here. And what, so you're, you're there, I know we can't get into too many details about the secret secret quarantine project of yours, but we will soon enough. Uh, but you're there. We can. You're there to look at the response, right, of the theater community because it's they're up and running now, yeah. right? It's 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 remarkable, and and I think that you know particularly what what you know Sharon, as you mentioned, and 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 Phantom have done in being able to run throughout the the pandemic is heroic, and and I think that you know one of the things that when I talk to friends about you know what I'm doing here and and is that I don't think a lot of people realize that the that there are m many musicals r that are going to be running here this summer um none of them are running on a principle of social distancing social distancing is not a a, a large component of South Korea's approach to um to covid i mean it was so interesting when i got off the plane immediately the lines unlike the lines at jfk or you know whatever weren't socially distant and my brain was so conditioned i was like i'm supposed to be six feet apart and then i was like oh actually like that's it social distancing isn't a huge component of of the approach here hygiene is the center of the approach and um clearly it's working and i think that in terms of like what phantom did specifically what what um is so amazing to me is that you know when they had they they had two company members test positive back in um, March, and it's astounding to me that it was only two, because if you think about you know this this group of people all inhabiting the space same space every day, um, uh, the fact that they were able to contain it I think speaks to um, the measures that are that have been implemented to keep everybody safe and how containment and track and trace is is working um so and they and they got the show back up in two and a half weeks so i i think that's fascinating and i think there's a lot to be learned from what's going on here as we you know in in the us and on the west end and you know everywhere else try to figure out how to get ourselves back yeah and we we talk about this a lot how do we keep our our artists on stage safe and the musicians and backstage and then of course there's the big question of will our audience come back but i i would imagine and tell me because sharon and i talked about this a little bit but you you must feel pretty confident that the people you're going to walk around and see are safe because they everyone's going through this like these very restrictive measures so you know that well they're getting checked and this is pretty getting checked do you feel safer there than here? Oh yeah, I mean, the second I stepped off the plane, I was like, ah, you know, like, thank goodness. Because I mean, if you just think about it, like 289 deaths, like is, is horrible, but it's just, it's a totally different world. And I think that the people who are going to the theater, you know, yes, of course, nothing is zero risk. Um, so they're taking a risk, but, it's it's a at this point it's a it's a calculated risk that there's enough 
state there are enough safety measures in place that it's not like you know reopening schools in Arizona. You know, it's 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 there's been a lot of thought put into this, and I think that you know um, uh, I'll be in a lot of rehearsal rooms and in a lot of tech processes and things like that, and and I um, I'm personally not concerned. And I think part of what it comes down to for me is I'm, you know, I, I just um, became part of this uh, think tank that that uh, Matt Ross runs called the uh, COVID Theater Think Tank. That's a group of, you know, theater people who are coming together trying to figure out, you know, um, and talk, talking to doctors, talking to scientists about solutions for Broadway. And um, one of the things that that the doctors have repeatedly told Matt that he he sort of uses as a mantra for this think tank is that um there it's going to be a cocktail of solutions like it's not going to be like aha the vaccine has arrived theater can restart tomorrow like it it the science just isn't that simple um and so it's it's going to take you know the self cleaning door handles it's going to take the the contactless thermometers it's going to take all of these things to 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 get us up and running again so i think that in a way, it's like, how fast can we get this information? How fast can we relay this information in a way that's palatable for people, in a way that makes people want to come back to the theater, makes them feel safe about coming back to the theater? It's like everything else. It's, it's communication. It's having, sure. having what we need to have to keep people safe and then to let them know that it's, it's going to be OK. Yeah, uh, it's just amazing to me. I was just my eyes may have darted uh, because I was off on another tab googling because you said 280 deaths or whatever it was, and you breathe a sigh of relief. There are 50 million people, 51 million people in South Korea. 280. Yeah, it's not like some like you know island in the middle of the ocean. It's like yeah. you know this is this is it's. It's impressive, you know. Um, so I think, you know, and I'm I'm not a public health expert at all, you know, but I'm trying to learn as much as I can, as quickly as I can, as as many of us are, you know, to to try to figure out how to be useful because I think I was um, you know, I was sitting in my apartment in New York being like, I've never felt more useless. <laughs> um, and and so the, this this project that I'm you know working on with with many others, um, uh, my wonderful mother included, um, uh, is uh, is aimed at sort of aiding in that communication. Well, your your research and investigation over there into what they're doing is really great. I have a feeling it's going to help a lot of us over here. So let's switch gears a little bit. Um, you're going to speak at my conference this year, which I'm very excited about. Um, and you're going to be on a panel about creating theater in a new world. So what I love about you and your mind, and for those of you who don't know, I'll just tell the story that I tell all the time, which is that Sammy, I first like was aware, well, second, I second was aware of Sammy when uh, I wrote a blog about her and a production of Violet that she did immersively on a bus while you were at Stanford, right? Mm -hmm. And I was just amazed that I wrote this blog and Mary's going to dig it up right now and stop playing mm -hmm. over there, whatever she's doing on her phone. And, she, <laughs> and she's going to throw, she doesn't even know what Tetris is. That's what's really funny. She's like, <laughs> what the hell is Tetris? Mario Kart. Is that Very Mario good. Kart? <laughs> anyway, I wrote this blog back in 2013 or something about this production saying, I believe this, this is the new generation of theater makers. And then come to find out, here you are, we're talking, you're in Korea, you're going to direct Joy for me, which I'm very excited about. Um, so obviously, look, this affects all theater makers and all of us in a different way. And this is what you're going to speak about on this panel, but give me a little... How are you feeling right now, your creative energy and how all of this is gonna change how you make theater in the future? I I think, I mean, my, my I think like many of us, my brain was sort of like all over the place for the last hundred days. I mean, initially <laughs> it was so funny because I, I felt like when it hit initially, I was like, oh, 
thank God, like I've been so burned out. <laughs> like it's like it just this, this is like whew, um, I can catch up on all my emails. You know, I mean, obviously not thank God because people were 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 dying, but I think you know from a trying to reconcile the the time, I was like, okay, you know, this time is a healthy thing, um, and then you know, I think we all sort of hit a slump at, at some point, everybody hit it at a, at, at a different point. And I guess for me, the moment where I decided to like look beyond theater, which is something that I've resisted doing for a long time was sort of the moment where I started feeling better. And it actually ironically brought me back to theater. And, and I think that mm. to me, my friends who are, doing things that aren't directly related to theater right now, fully intend to come back to theater. And I think that it's exciting to think about what everybody's gonna bring back with them if you know we do survive in a, in a massive enough way for, for all of us to, 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 to come back full force. And I think that you know, for me, that's been mostly TV and film, work and 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 sort of like learning about those worlds and, and working on various projects in those worlds. Um, but I, I, you know, I have a friend who is like moving to Estonia for six months, you know, and and and, and I just think do what? Sorry, do something specific or just to get the heck out of Dodge. Apparently, Estonia has like a, a visa program that like if you have a remote job you can get a free visa I, I hope i'm not misquoting this but like you can get a free visa for a year to go live in estonia and i was like cool <laughs> i mean it just feels like the 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 spontaneity of that that i think a lot of us are arriving at i i i guess at least for me it was brought about by um the uh the impending you know end of PUA or whatever we're calling it, P P U A, the 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 you know unemployment money, and I was like, oh, like I, I can't actually just sit in my apartment anymore. I have to do something because I'd been like, oh, this is like self enrichment time. I'm gonna like go read these books I always wanted to read or watch these movies or prep these shows or whatever. But at a certain point, that's unsustainable financially and um, mentally. <laughs> so. Um, and this project, even this project was somewhat self-initiated, right? You, so you, you kicked it off. You had an yeah. idea and you were like, I'm just gonna email some people about it and see what I can stir up. And the next thing you know, someone's flying you to Korea, right? Basically, yeah, I mean, it all came about because I was FaceTiming with a, a friend who's working on a production here. And she was like, I'm going to Korea. And I was like, why are you going to Korea? And then I was like, can I come? And then it just, it, you know, as you say, it turned into a lot of emails and um, some amazing supporters came on board and, and we have some, you know, awesome partnerships. So um, I, 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 I think that in a way it's like, it's hard to make your own destiny right now. And I got lucky in many ways that this fell into place and it was through, you know, the efforts of a lot of people that it fell into place, but, I, I do take the lesson from that, that, you know, one day I was sitting in my apartment really upset and the next day I was like, I'm gonna try something. And so. I, and it's because of just like three words, can I come? You just asked a question and you probably didn't even think if you were serious. Like, yeah, I was, no. okay, like hey, can I come? And they were like, okay. And you were like, I, could I come? Yes, I could come. This is what I love about you and and so many people out there, and I urge everyone listening to really heed this advice uh, from Sammy here about what I, I call what she did serving the tennis ball. I think it's all, it's, it's entrepreneur's responsibility, it's theater maker's responsibility, it's anyone who wants to control their own destiny, you have to start the game. You serve the tennis ball, and if, if someone doesn't hit it back, you just serve it again until someone does, and what you've done, Sammy, is you serve the tennis ball, you're in Korea, you're quarantined, and you have that suit lady like taking your temperature, but you're also like you, you're doing something that is going to be very educational, enriching for you and for a whole lot of people 
because you're going to help us understand what they're doing over there. So I'm very thankful you're you're going through that over there. Uh, and I can't wait to see what you and, and your beloved mom cook up. <laughs> well, thank you. And I mean, it's um, the, the the admiration in that regard is so mutual. And I I, I think, you know, I've, I've watched a lot of, of these live streams, you know, over the course of, of the lockdown because it's so, I think it's so helpful to see how other artists are um, approaching this time, you know, because it's like, of course we can all go, you know, listen to your podcast from, from before this started, or we can go watch movies from before this started. But I, in addition to having like live conversations with, with friends, I'm just like, I'm so hungry for information about how our community is um, rolling with the punches and, and what we're going to look like when we come out of this. And, you know, um, so it's, it's a, a privilege to be on, on the front lines here and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful and, you know, all the things. Well, we all look forward to hearing, uh, the after when you get back and by the way, you're going to have to quarantine over here too. So we'll get ready for that. So we know has you know, we're just out of, you had a number two pencil, it's still out of form and like, you know, we'll they see. Don't. watch Netflix. Won't, won't be as uh, buttoned up, but, uh, yeah. you know. Maybe okay. by then it'll be better. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Be safe over there. Ooh. Have some fun. Enjoy the theater. Take lots of pictures. Uh, I'm jealous. <laughs> Go see Phantom of the Opera. I will. And and we'll be able to to say what we're doing hopefully soon. I just, you know, because um, I, I want to share it, you know, and, and uh, appreciate the, the opportunity to talk about it coyly. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll hear all about it when you speak uh, at the conference this fall. So. And as Barbara says, you're a brilliant light. Thanks for being Thanks, here. Barbara, that's so lovely. <laughs> Sammy Cannold, everybody. Fantastic director. And what, like, I did not know she was going to say that about the, like, can I come? It's, it's that simple uh, that you can change your own destiny. She changed her life. She changed her life with three words. Can I come? Otherwise, she'd be sitting here miserable because she, she's a good part of the gen, her generation and that she would actually be not out of frat party or sorority party or something. She'd actually be inside or outside with a mask on. Uh, so, and she just, she will now have an experience that will help a whole bunch of other people and will enrich her life. And someday I bet like 10 years from now, she'll be find herself in a room and she'll realize, Oh, I just did this thing. I learned this thing. And this thing is a success because I went to Korea 10 years ago. That's what happens. So, Ask a question like that tomorrow when you're figuring out what the heck you're going to do here. Ask a question. And you know what? Whatever you ask, it's possible if you want it. Uh, so we'll wrap up there. Thanks so much for being here for this very special episode of the Producers Perspective Live. We go back to our normal schedule. Oh, Kathy Horgan says, can't wait to be let in on the secret. Da, da, da. Big secret. Uh, we go back to our regular schedule this Tuesday. We've got uh, like a bunch of hunks joining us on the show, like three in a row. Stephen Pasquale next week uh, on Tuesday. And I think after that, Norm Lewis. I mean, it's like my all my man crushers are joining us for like the month of hot, hot July and August. So join us on Tuesday for Stephen, uh, Bridges of Madison County, American Sun, a whole bunch of other things, TV star as well. Um, we'll see him on Tuesday. Uh, join us for that. Don't forget about the Actors Fund. Please donate if you're enjoying these. Uh, if you find yourself wonderfully motivated, McKenna, McKenna, my daughter's name is McKenna. Uh, if you find yourself wonderfully motivated, please do help out. Throw some bucks into the till for the Actors Fund. Um, Sammy mentioned PUA, uh, the unemployment benefits, which may be running out, which means a whole bunch of artists are going to need your help. Uh, in being able to stay here and to continue making art. We don't want to lose them. So please do what you can to help. Uh, don't forget, if this, if this conversation, if you found this conversation interesting and you, uh, this is such an ugly domain, you have to copy and paste it. Um, if you found this conversation interesting, go to this website right now. Don't try to type it in manually. Go to this website right now. This is this three-part video series that Mary put it back in the bottom of the comments. I can't figure it out. Uh, if you if, if this interests you, safety, and we mentioned this woman named Sharon Cassif a few times who works for the Really Useful Group, Really Useful Group, 
is actually the company that I do some work for. It's Andrew Lloyd Webber's organization. They are producing that phantom over there, so they, they know all about this. I got Sharon on a video to talk about this for about a good 20 minutes about what they did in her experience in getting uh, phantom back up in the apex of it in Korea. So go check that out. You're going to jump in about the third video of this three-part series, so the communication may seem a little wacko, um, but just do it. It's worth it, and you can go back and watch the other ones. But Because the safety video, I think it may drop tomorrow. So go check that out. I think you'll really enjoy it, especially if you enjoyed this one. Lastly, it's Thursday, uh, but Mary still found you something to make you smile. And you know who always makes me smile? And we should get on this dang live stream is Shoshana Bean, Mary. We should get Shoshana on this live stream. All right, Mary just gave us the thumbs up. She's going to do that. And if she doesn't, we'll take her to task. Anyway, Shoshana, uh, in her very generous way, held a benefit, a virtual benefit for a, I think it's Beaverton High School's theater department. And she did this benefit. And at the beginning, of she got all these alphabets to do to find gravity. That's right. You don't need to go to Wicked to see one alphabet. You can see 17 alphabets on the internet. The producersperspective.com backslash smile is where that video is. Go check it out. It was posted three days ago, and it's got 41,000 views already. So in other words, there's some serious belting going on. Go check it out. It'll make you smile. Thanks so much for being here. We'll see you Tuesday with Stephen Pasquale. Stay safe, everybody, because we're not in Korea. We're getting the band back together.